You just saw me build a simple bracket for a lighting fixture. It's a piece of aluminium that I squared up, drilled four holes in, and then I made a center hole with a boring head. As you probably saw, that was quite a few tool changes for a relatively simple part. As you probably know, to release the tool, you undo the drawbar and then give it a light tap with a hammer and that should release the tool. Now doing that isn't too complicated, but every tool change takes about 30 to 40 seconds and depending on how many tools you need to make a part, that time can quickly add up. And it's for this reason why a lot of people find ways of automating this upwards and downwards movement of the drawbar. Most of them will work by using spring washers that are loaded onto the drawbar. The washers can compress to release the tool, but they will then spring back in order to hold the tool in place in the collet. And by stacking them, you can get a good amount of force on the drawbar. Of course though, we do need a way of compressing the drawbar. And most people end up using a pneumatic air cylinder to push the springs down. And I'm not saying that it's a bad idea, because a lot of people do it, but my air compressor really isn't up to the job. I've also seen people use impact drivers to push the collet out, but that requires a captive drawbar, which this milling machine doesn't have. A while back, I saw a video of someone who used a double lever setup to compress the springs. Doing this will give you a huge mechanical advantage, and it doesn't require the need of compressed air. It seems like a great idea, and it's something that I would love to have on my milling machine. So the first thing I did was jump onto SolidWorks and model it up. The model didn't have to be too complicated, just good enough to work out the spacings and the basic design. I also don't have a huge amount of material to work with in this project, so getting it done on the computer can allow me to make sure that I can make it with the material that I have. To make the assembly, I'm actually going to be reusing material from the old lathe 4 axis. Whilst it's going to be a bit sad tearing apart this old project, in fact this is the first major project that I ever made in this new workshop, the sad fact is, I haven't used it ever since I bought the big milling machine, so it's just been sitting in a corner gathering dust. Plus there is close to a hundred bucks worth of aluminium, so I might as well use it. I've marked out the work and I'm going to use a slitting saw to cut it up. I'll now start to cut up the aluminium for the lower lever. It comprises of three parts which are all bolted together. I'll drill and tap some holes for some bolts. And the pieces will stack up to form an assembly. I've added two steel spacers to increase the gap in the middle. And that is the front lever done for the moment. Next I'll prepare the four bearing pillars which will house the bearings which will attach to the levers.
The bearings that I'm using have an OD of 35mm, so I'll need to use the boring head to bore it to size. Now to be completely honest, one or two of these came out perfect and it ended up being a really good press fit, but the other two might need some bearing retaining compound to hold it in place. And those are the bearing blocks done. Next I can start to lay out and machine the plate that everything will bolt onto. Everything will bolt onto it and then it will bolt to the top of the mill. Doing this is a lot easier than bolting everything to that top piece. And everything is starting to come together. Next I'll need to make the new drawbar and top out. The new drawbar will be almost the same as the old one, just slightly longer to accommodate the large stack of spring washers. The top hat will sit below the washer stack and it's designed to take the downwards pressure when the washers are being compressed. If I didn't have this, when I press down on the washers, the lever will simply push the quill down and we won't get any compression on the washers. Of course I do have the quill lock, but the quill lock simply isn't strong enough, especially with a Morse taper. It might be a little bit different with an R8 spindle, but with a Morse taper, there's going to be a lot of holding power. Next, I'll machine the pin that connects the levers to the bearings. Next I'll make the top lever. I'll bore a hole for a shaft and then drill and tap it for a grub screw.
What I've done now is I've added this top piece of aluminium to the lever. I've added a temporary screw and it will be what eventually presses down on that second lever. Now doing it this way it should give me a huge amount of mechanical advantage which will allow me to compress the spring washers. Now there's going to be a lot of rubbing on this section of aluminium which I suspect will start to wear down pretty quickly. So what I'll do is I'll cut a piece of steel and I'll bolt it in and sort of inlay it into the aluminium to give it a bit more longevity. With the build nearing completion, I can now mark out the location of the pin which will compress the drawbar. You can now probably see that rear pin which will move down and compress the washers. It won't move very far, maybe only 3 or 4 millimetres of movement, but we'll get a few thousand newtons of force pressing down on those spring washers. Next I'll make the top hat sliding mechanism, which will take the downwards component of the force. Originally I was going to use several pieces of thin steel to make a piece that slides to the other side and locks in place, but upon seeing this I wasn't too happy with the overall design. It looked a little flimsy, or at least a bit more flimsy than it did on the computer. So I went ahead and redesigned it and made it from a big piece of steel bar. I'll first open it up with a roughing end mill, and then I'll come in with a big 18mm end mill and clear out the rest of the material. The top hat needs to slide backwards and forwards, so I'll drill four holes and then open them up with an end mill to create four slots. The bolts that I'm using here are a temporary fix. I'll be making up some proper pins for the final design, but this should allow it to slide backwards and forwards. I'm also adding a spring to hold the back lever up. It's been a few days since I last recorded, and I've added a few things to the drawbar. I've added a spring below the bottom lever, and that should keep it from touching the drawbar when it's spinning. I've also slimmed down the handle to make it a little bit easier to grasp onto. I've also replaced that cap head screw for a pin. All in all, it's been several months of work and I'm really looking forward to seeing if it works. And I'm very happy to say that it does work and it doesn't take as much force to work as I was thinking it would. To make it work, the top hat plate is pushed in to engage the top hat, and the lever is simply pulled down. This will push down on the drawbar, and that will release the tool. As for the spring washers, you do have to add a certain amount of preload, so it actually holds the tool in place. What I have here is a relatively low amount of preload set, and I'm still testing it out to see how much I actually need. But even with this relatively low amount of preload, I can easily do aluminium and light cuts in steel. 
I haven't done any heavy cuts in steel yet, but if I see the tool being pulled out of the collet, I'll simply have to add a bit more preload and that should fix it. As for this design as a whole, whilst I'm very happy that I was able to get it to work, I'm not overly convinced that this is a better solution for a power drawbar, at least compared to the air cylinder method that we're all familiar with. From start to finish, this was easily 7 months of on and off work, and it really took a lot of time to get it dialed in and working. I know that a lot of you use these videos as a guide for your own upgrades, and whilst I could get this to work, I just couldn't recommend that you try and copy this unless you were really determined to get this style of power drawbar. Or I guess, power less drawbar, since there's no power to it. I am thinking of doing a much more user friendly version of this, though that will come sometime next year if I get around to doing it. So I'll try and work on that in the background, but for the time being, this will be my power drawbar, and I'm very happy with it. And that's about it for now. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time.